Constable this morning visit Guazulu Natal to receive an update on the damages that have been caused by this week's floods. In a statement, the presidency confirms that Roma possible visit flood-stricken parts of the province to offer support to affected communities. For more on the story, let's uh, now bring in our colleague Ayanda Mklongo. Very good morning to you. Ayanda, has the president arrived? A very good morning to Desmond. Good morning to our viewers. No, the president has not arrived, but the leaders of KwaZulu Natal government officials have started to arrive. Just a moment ago, we were speaking to the premier of the province, Sithle Zigalal. Of course, he's accompanied by uh, um, MECs um, in the province and other officials um, as they await the arrival of President Cyril Ramaphosa. As you said, the president, uh, Desiree, is here to assess the extent of the damage. As we know that the death toll uh, from last night stood at, 14, at 59, 40, 45 people uh, uh, killed in the Etiguini metro alone, uh, 14 in the Ilembe uh, district, and hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, people, uh, Desiree, left destitute. Of course, now, Desiree, it's all hands on on deck from government, from uh, civil society, from non-government organizations, and a number of other royal players that are now uh, on board uh, joining government in its efforts to assist uh, those people that have uh, been affected by these uh, devastating uh, uh, floods that have hit the province, especially uh, hardest hit is the Etewini municipality. And with that, let me now bring in the mayor of the municipality, Mr. Mkoli Sikawunda, Mayor very good morning to you. I was just uh, uh, speaking to you before we went on air on how tired you looked, saying that you've had really, uh, uh, very, very little sleep. Um, minute by minute, you are getting calls of people that need help. Of course, each and every minute is a minute of response because uh, there are community members who are still forwarding reports that there are people who have not been found. So therefore, our rescue teams working with SAPS, uh, they are working tirelessly to look for those uh, missing pe uh, persons. And we are also working hard to try and deal with the infrastructure. Uh, which will require a lot of resources. We are happy that the president is coming here uh, with ministers uh, so that the assessment of the damages that we have experienced as a city uh, and the magnitude of that, it requires major, major investments uh, to restore services to our communities, especially roads, water and electricity, which were severely affected during these floods. And it's so the first time we experienced such a flood uh, because the, the are different than the previous ones. These, the previous floods were targeting certain areas. So these ones were all over, had no boundaries. They were not even moving through the roads. They were all over uh, attacking our, our communities and uh, the properties uh, that we have seen being damaged. I know that you're still assessing and disaster management teams are still out and about, but what have been the latest reports, uh, uh, Mayor, that you have um, been able to receive? Do you have any idea how many homes we are talking about, how many people we're talking about? I know you had also said that it's really too early now to uh, give an estimate of the cost yes. of this damage, but yes. you've had an opportunity to drive around. Uh, what has been your biggest concern? Yes, uh, if you look at the informal settlements, more than 4,000 reports that we have seen, uh, houses which have been washed away. We are not only talking about the houses which experience uh, water challenges in their properties, but we talk about the damage, uh, uh, severely damaged uh, houses. And we also talk about more than 2,000 uh, uh, houses which were built by the state uh, to support the social, uh, 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 social economic conditions of our communities. Those are also affected. And many individual properties, even in affluent areas where there is proper infrastructure because these uh, floods were ha had no had no boundaries so they were moving towards each and every second moving to different direction so hence the damage is severe as we see 
and also I think um, uh, concern would be the fact that uh, you uh, already um, areas are still without lights now for about 20 over 20 hours a uh, water cuts uh, as well and you're saying that unfortunately residents of Eteguini must expect that in the coming days in the coming weeks that they're still going to be um, experiencing electricity cuts and water cuts as you try to go back and fix the reservoirs and the pumps that were damaged yes we appeal to our residents uh, to be patient with us because our teams are working 24 7 uh, in many areas even the mayor doesn't have water in the area where he lives so we are expecting our teams to try their level best to do their level best to ensure that we restore those services where possible there are things which will require major repairs uh, those are the things which are not going to be a short-term responses from government which will require more funding for us to be able to restore those services so but we are mitigating wherever is possible we are sending uh, water tankers uh, to try and mitigate in between uh, we are still faced with these challenges where people have no water and uh, we are adding more water tankers to ascertain that at least even if we are not putting more than five in each and every water at least there must be one water tanker that is servicing that ward and unfortunately uh, um Mayor, while you're trying to contain and deal with this uh, situation, this natural uh, disaster that was, you know, out of anyone's control, but there are some people, elements that are now capitalizing on this, disturbing uh, uh, images that we saw yesterday down in the Prospectin Umlazi area where people had already started looting. Um, uh, in terms of uh, the police's uh, response, are you satisfied that they were able to respond to that situation and so that it does? not spread yes we condemn that action because we can't be faced with these difficulties and people they are adding and inflicting more pain uh, to people because this is about other people's jobs uh, when you go and steal you are shading away jobs uh, it's not only about you taking some goods but also uh, we are having a challenge with some um, committee members who are mobilizing committees to to run protest you know prior to these floods we also experienced a challenge of the companies that are, are erecting the fiber in the city so they've damaged our infrastructure hence some of the people are saying these problems did not start when the rains came they started before that so this is as a result of these uh, companies which are just digging wherever they they feel they must dig uh, to, to 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 install these fibers so it's something which is needed by the community for communication but it is done recklessly by these companies and whenever they damage our our assets they do not report that we only get a response from the community after they've damaged it all what we are expecting them to do is to notify us once we damage our assets tell us so that we go and fix things as early as possible so those are the kind of challenges that we are faced with but we are appealing to communities let us calm ourselves down because this do not require a violence this do not require a uh, people who are grandstanding because they want their organizations to be known that they exist in the community but all what it needs is collaborations is for us uh, to work together to fix what needs to be fixed yeah. Mayor, before I let you go, you know, yesterday we were speaking to a business a businessman who um, has also been affected by this, and just saying, and I want people to get a sense of what uh, KwaZulu Natal has gone through. The, we had the pandemic uh, 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 followed by the July unrest, and now uh, these floods. There's been this concern of business to say, are we going to be able to recover because we've been hit not once, not twice, but now a third time. Yes, it's, it's true that all these incidents, they put more strain to the economy. Uh, remember that some people were still recovering from COVID-19. They were still recovering from the unrest of July. Uh, so it gives uh, more pressure to them and also uh, will be adding on shading the jobs because uh, if companies decide not to retain their operations, it's going to affect people, not only businesses, uh, the families uh, where a breadwinner will be losing a job. So that is why uh, we'll sit with them and uh, also persuade them that um, they must uh, develop that resilience for now and we'll support them as government wherever possible uh, so that we are able to retain uh, businesses, the investments, and we re retain jobs. Mayor.
Thank you so much for Thank your time. The Mayor of uh, Etegwini, uh, the Desiree Ngolisi Kawonda, of course, just speaking about uh, the response so far from the municipality, but also, as we heard from him, that it's still uh, a, a lot of work that still needs to be done. Clearly, the impact of these floods are going to be felt for quite some time. Residents in this metro are not going to be, uh, are going to be without water and electricity at some time at points uh, for quite some time now as officials are trying uh, to fix uh, the damage caused to uh, infrastructure to the water pumps to electricity substations so it's going to be felt for for quite uh, some time um, but unfortunately worse of course affected all those people that today um, have nothing all those people that have lost their homes their belongings and this is what has brought the uh, president uh, here today he's going to be visiting a number of areas he's going to be meeting with uh, relatives uh, or, or families who've lost their loved ones and is also then going to be taken around just to see the extent of this damage. Uh, the president is expected uh, to arrive here uh, at about half past nine, we are told at Desert, so any minute now. But um, the uh, minister in the presidency, Mondli Kongobele, arrived earlier this morning. We also know that the president is going to be accompanied by the minister of Cocta, Dr. Nkosa as well as the Minister of Police, uh, Begi Kele. Uh, and I suppose the Minister of Police would be important in this visit as well, Desiree, especially after these incidents that were reported yesterday where there was looting in the prospecting uh, Umlazi area. You'd know that uh, we reported um, that there were containers that uh, had been blown away in a storage facility and also parts of that area submerged in water and what happened then yesterday afternoon was that uh, residents from possibly areas nearby then uh, making their way down to those uh, containers and uh, opening them and looting and taking whatever they could find. We also told that there were reports of a warehouse that was also uh, looted yesterday afternoon but the authorities have said that police have responded and are monitoring that particular area and police have been dispatched or deployed uh, to other areas uh, around the metro we well, also of course uh, yesterday you would note that uh, the South African National Defense uh, 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 Force had been uh, called to come in and assist and the uh, Premier also earlier on when we spoke to him the Premier uh, Zegalala, saying that that uh, the South African National Defence Force was also going to be on the ground uh, to assist. Uh, recovery efforts, search uh, efforts are continuing. Um, sadly, as the mayor was also saying to us, that uh, they are still searching for uh, people who are missing, which then means that uh, the death toll, which currently stands at 59, uh, could rise. A difficult uh, situation, uh, Desiree, certainly not a visit that that uh, the president would have uh, wanted uh, to come to the province under these uh, circumstances. Uh, it just takes us back to when the president arrived in the province to assess the damage of the uh, looting uh, or the extent of the damage during the July unrest and again within hours of these uh, flooding the president is now here back in the province to this time see for himself the devastation that has been caused by these floods. We are on the ground throughout the day at Desiree giving our viewers a blow by blow account of what is expected to happen here today and we'll be accompanying the president as he visits the families and the areas to see the extent of the damage. For now, let me take things back to you, Desiree. Ayanda, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. Of course, we'll be touching base with you uh, uh, momentarily again, just to continue looking at the impact of this, what you've just called devastating floods. Ayanda Mklongo there for you.